All right, folks, so you know I like talking about controversial things in the sport of fishing. Well, we're going to start talking about controversial things in the sport of drag racing, drifting, just car shows and car cruises. Um, I know a lot of muscle car enthusiasts are starting to feel this as a threat going from gas combustion engines over to electric. Um, and I'm going to get into why. If you're not a part of that hobby, you know, probably just went over your head. Well, oh, you know, how is that going to change? Believe me, it's going to change the sport. And this could change professional drag racing. This could change NASCAR racing. Um, and I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get into why, you know, going to something such as, a, you know, from, you know, gas power cars over to electric cars, how that can help the sport of fishing and clean up the environment and, you know, also lower the carbon footprint uh, for things such as climate change. I mean, right off the bat, the BP oil spill, oil, you know, do you know how devastating that was to the fishing in industry down in Florida? I was just down there, I'm not going to briefly touch on this, I'll talk to about it more down in the, uh, the video, but they have a red tide problem, and part of that is due to pollution, you know, such as too much fertilizer, and some of it, I'm sure it's due to, you know, probably the BP oil spill and the repercussions of that. Uh, but getting past that, um, you know, I'm going to try to relate these two sports, um, but getting past that, you know, Mopar, GM, and Ford, well, I know Mopar just released news that basically they're getting rid of the V8 Challenger and Charger. And by 2024, they're going to have electric muscle cars. I don't know if this is going to be something like the Electro Cuda or something, you know? You got to watch this video of this high schooler. I think it's a high schooler. I saw a post on a forum from when I remember. This was a high schooler doing a project, and he put together this cool video using a song from the band Heart, you know, all women band, and using this badass song Barracuda in combination with his own designed electric muscle car. And I think he just basically took a standard photo of a Challenger and just, you know, photoshopped it around to make it look cool, like a modern age look to it. And combining both the song and the look of that electric muscle car, you know, made for a pretty neat video. And I like the way he called it, the Electro Electro Cucuda. I can't even say it. But pretty neat, man. Pretty neat. However, a lot of muscle car enthusiasts might not think so. Um, you need to watch. It's not even necessarily have to watch, but you should watch. You gotta watch this Cobra Jet video where the company Ford has basically taken, you know. They usually make every new model Mustang create a Jet Cobra version of the Mustang, uh, you know, a new generation. They did that with the newer one. And this time around, instead of being gas powered and supercharged, they decided to make it all electric. And this baby's pumping out 1,400 horsepower. Absolutely incredible. Mind you, there's like going to be no delay, you know, no lag. Even though we went from carbureted, fuel injected, prevented some of that. But now there's just no delay at all. You know, all the power is going to the rear tires. There's like, I think with electric cars, there's no shifting. Um, so it's just a straight down, straight down the track. And it went like almost eight seconds flat, man. And this thing's smoking, man. It's, it's flying down the track. It actually, the front tires lifted up a little bit. And I thought, oh, that was cool. It man, resembled the front end a long um, some of there. the previous, you know, pro street cars on the front end lifts up when they're, you know, taking off down the track drag racing. However, you know, looking at this video, what's missing? It's the sound. And that's the thing with these new cars and going to be with the electric muscle car. There is no sound to them. So I just, I think this reading and just like I was talking about, we're talking about viewing the video, but you need to go on the comment section and see the response from the muscle car community. And a lot of people are not happy about it. And I mean, people are fucking pissed off, to be honest with you. So let's go over some of the comments. I'll bring some of them up right now um, and kind of analyze them per se. Um, so this 
uh, car enthusiasts, or mostly car enthusiasts, I should say, Kyle Gallant, said, Part of the fun about being raised at the drag strip is when you feel the performance literally in your chest. I doubt you will get that sensation from this. Again, sorry, not interested. So he's talking about the rumble. You're feeling like the shock waves hitting your chest and the sound, all that stuff, man. And then you're talking about bringing out the five senses in my, like, you know, custom lure for bass fishing, you know. All those different, you know, taking a, a hard material and a soft material, combining together to get, you know, attraction to the bass. Well, you know, one thing that car enthusiasts are attracted about with muscle cars is the sound, the exhaust. And some of these car enthusiasts, I'm telling you, um, I'm one of them. I noticed... I know that I really enjoyed like the smaller displacement engine Mustangs, such as the 5.0, the 4.6 liter. I had a 2004 Cobra. I really liked the drone coming from the exhaust on those, and they always use true dual exhaust. And so I wanted to implement that on my Trans Am, and I did like X pipe, completely custom exhaust, dual exhaust with X pipe. And I can never get that sound because, you know, you're taking a small black 5.7 liter that's like a 30 for 30, 346 inches cubic inches and comparing it to the 4.6 liter. It just there's a different sound be create, creating. And I think that small displacement Mustang engine, um, it just had a unique sound to that. And I was trying to mimic that in my Trans Am and I couldn't quite get it. I went with Dynamax mufflers. Again, true dual exhaust, I was trying to mimic that, but I still ended up getting a little rasp. But I think I did get a little drone, a deeper note, and I ended up having it, or adding in Cook's headers. And you talk about the complexity, um, just like all the different performance parts you can add to a natural combustion engine car. Are we going to be able to do this with with electric musk cars, we're talking about 410 gears in the rear end to make your car faster. You can change different, you know, stick shifts. Um, you can change different transmission. You know, it was popular about the the um, the the Ford transmissions was a tr I think it was a Tremec or I can't remember Mopar made that or whatever. But you could have a beefier transmission. You know, you could have a beefier rear end nine inch. Um, and talking about the difference performance enhancers, um, talking about, you know, the superchargers, the turbochargers, and you're not going to be able to do this uh, to, um, you know, electric muscle cars. You know, I have a friend that stroked out his T-Bird, put in a bigger camshaft and get that lope exhaust note, uh, and that sounds badass. And the one thing, you know, getting to what I was, the point I was going to make about exhaust you know, I went on all types of different forums, like hey, back in the day, lstech.com forum was real popular for four gens. I had a Trans Am again, and a lot of people would post the different brands of exhaust. And I just didn't like the, all All they used was a wide pipe. But I listened to every different brand of exhaust, Borla, Magnaflow, Flowmaster, Corsa. Try to want to get that note I wanted, but I just didn't like it. And so I ended up getting my own custom true dual exhaust made. I actually, <laughs> being a fisherman, I shouldn't have done it, but I took my catalytic converters off, you know. So, um, and I ended up having Cook's headers and it got a really deep sound. And that baby, when I started up every morning, it shook the fucking garage. And like my neighbors hated it, but I had one neighbor with youngsters next door that loved it. So it just, I'm sure they, I influenced them into sports cars and muscle cars in general. But we're going to lose all that, man. Think about this. This is, we're losing things like the power headers, you know, like supercharger, uh, turbocharger, all these different modifications you can do to a national combustion engine. And if you notice in that movie Mad Max, they zoom in on the supercharger and he hits a button, how thrilling that was. You know, nitrous, nitrous is fucking awesome, you know. You're not going to have that all with electric muscle cars. Now, I will say this. Um, you know, when I went to the Roadkill Nights, uh, I got to bring up this guy's name. I, I, you know, I always, it's just like initials. I, I don't know this guy. But there is an announcer at the track at Roadkill Nights. And he talked about what I'm talking about now. Um, and I, I had a blast going to that. Um, 
KJ Jones. So this is like, I guess, um, he, he was a previous racer, I think, um, but he was an announcer at Rogue Hill Knights, and he talked about it briefly when he was announcing letting all these, you know, different muscle cars run against each other out on Wordward from different generations or different eras. Um, and he talked about how, you know, he doesn't think that electric muscle cars is going to change the sport of drag racing. He thinks it's just going to be a complete positivity and people are just going to find a way to go faster. I have to disagree on that, man. I don't know about this. I think people are going to drag race and enjoy that. But again, getting back to the different modifications you can do to the natural combustion engine compared to an electric muscle car, you just, how many modifications are going to do an electric muscle car? I mean, yeah, people will find a different way to make it go faster, but how many different things you can do? I mean, it's just, um, it might have, I just, there's no gears, there's no transmission. You can't add a different camshaft or a cam and head package. Can add supercharged turbocharger and nitrous. What is that? You're, yeah, it's not gonna work, man. You know, so it's just interesting he said that. And you know, you gotta remember this guy sponsored at Roadkill Nights to come and announce at the drag strip, and he briefly announced and said that basically hinted to that Dodge has a surprise, Mopar has a surprise for muscle car enthusiasts by 2024. And it just got released. I wrote this article on my blog a few months ago, but it finally got released on the internet suggesting that they will be coming out with some type of electric muscle car. I don't know in what model, whether it's the Challenger, Charger, or the Electro Cuda, but they are. And so um, I think... Watching this Cobra Jet video, you're getting a lot of feedback on that. And, you you know, I think all these, these car companies are realizing that. But, I mean, just, I think it's inevitable we're going to be going this technology. Um, and I'm going to get into other things why it's just like you can't force some of this stuff on people. Uh, but here's another comment. Um, one guy, Main313, he goes, this proves it's all about sound. Okay, because it's just you do not get the rush. I would say me just personally watching this Cobra Jet video that's all electric, just don't get the rush as a normal, you know, previous uh, generations of uh, Cobra Jet in that model Mustang. Um, and one person said, Paul Crooks, most of the fun at a drag race is the noise. How about that? And I don't know if you ever bought out into the rural, rural areas of Michigan, you know, I'm north country country land um they have tractor pulling out there you know at some of the um some of the fairs so it's just like that's a big event and it's kind of similar to i would say drag racing drifting and all that and people get off on the sound pulling these heavy weights uh before you know behind trucks you know even sometimes they get cars out there but tractors all types of cool stuff and you're taking that way well Man, you know, you think thing thing about tractor pulling it might change that as well. Um, so that was like the last comment I pulled up. Um, and I have to say, you know, I think part of denial and climate change isn't that denial and climate change and the disliking of some of this new technology coming out, such as the muscle cars. It's obvious people aren't hap happy about some of this technology. Change isn't always for the great. Um, it might be for such things as the environment, but this might be hinting to why some people won't buy into things like climate change. Because I don't know if you know this, but like down south, uh, you know, it's obvious that like football's very religious to them and it's like a religion down there and when they came out showing that you know you can have serious reper repercussions such as cte there was some sort of denial there okay let's we know that by now if you watch the movie will smith you know with the cte shit and it just there's some denial there and i think the same denial we're seeing with football because it might change the sport and people are going to be less playing and saying it's unsafe well, it's the same thing, I think, with cars and muscle cars in general with the carbon footprint. It just, there's going to be a change happening 
where we got to go over to electric. And because, you know, drag racing, muscle cars, I mean, tractor pulling, and of course, NASCAR is like a religion down south. It is up here too, man. I mean, like I said, I was born on muscle cars. I plan on buying another one soon, you know. And I'm going to get into the price and how we're in a price bubble, but I don't know if it's actually a price bubble where the, things have really skyrocketed now. I'll get to that uh, soon. But if you're changing those things, I mean, let's watch this video. This is the most funniest video I've seen, I want to say, uh, from last year, where basically NASCAR all of a sudden decided to ban coolers. And this NASCAR fan just went absolutely berserk. So let's watch it right now and we're going to talk about um, what this video means to me afterwards. It's funny, but it's not so funny because I hear his frustration. This is not a fucking cooler. This is not a fucking cooler. But Texas Motor Speedway has banned coolers. This is a bunch of bullshit. I will not be coming back to Texas Motor Speedway until this cooler ban is lifted. And none of us should come back. It's a hundred motherfucking degrees out here. We're fixing to pack these stands full of people. And Texas Motor Speedway says, oh, by the way, motherfuckers, you can't bring a cooler. This is a bunch of horse shit. And I ain't going to allow no fucking body to push me around and tell me what the hell I can and cannot do. NASCAR fans pay the bill up in this son of a bitch. That's who pays the fucking bills around here. Now, you're going to fucking listen and we're going to bring our fucking coolers or we ain't fucking coming back, motherfuckers. This is my damn piece of shit backpack clear ass cooler. Half my damn ice melted on the way up here. These sons of bitches don't respect us at all. And I'm about over this shit. I'm about over spending money at a fucking place that don't give a shit about me. This is Motor Speedway. I hope you're watching this. I hope you're listening. We bought your tickets. We walked a damn mile to get to our seat in the freaking 100 degree heat so you could make damn money. And you sons of bitches ban coolers. That tells me that you totally disrespect us NASCAR fans that don't appreciate us whatsoever. So here's what I'm going to recommend. Us NASCAR fans need to ban Texas Motor Speedway. And I'm asking everybody not to come back to the next Texas race. No one. They going to fix this shit. And I want a formal apology from Texas Motor Speedway as to why you decided to disrespect the people that are paying the bills, you bunch of dumbasses. Yeah, we got a problem. Houston, you better be glad this ain't Houston. You better get it fixed. You better get it fixed quick. But I am asking all NASCAR fans not to spend one more dime at Texas Motor Speedway, which does not respect us fans until they get their heads out of their ass. Have a good one. When the other racetracks decide to put a ban on coolers, you better think damn twice. Because if I find out about it, I'm going to light your motherfucking ass up. You don't disrespect the fans. You hear me? You don't disrespect us. So anyways, uh, banning coolers, man. This guy's used to, you know, taking his beer, his water over to the stands. Very simply, you know, some people will just drag them. They got wheels on some of these coolers and they all of a sudden banned it. Um, it really pissed him off, obviously. And he was talking about because they banned coolers. And you got to take, you know, ice and whatever you're drinking, put it in some type of clear um, bag. It really drove him nuts. Imagine if we go from basically a combustion engine stock car to something su such as an electric stock car and you're losing all that noise and thrill and rumble that NASCAR enthusiasts love in the stands. I don't think people are going to enjoy it. And this goes back back to what, um, you know, uh, uh, KJ Jones said at Roadkill Nights. And I think this guy, remember, he's sponsored to be there. So he's just going to put a positive spin on it right away. I mean, just he's not going to talk about the pros and cons. He's just talking about the pros and thinks people are just going to find a way to go faster. I think there's some truth to that. But again, getting to the modifications, all the different cool mods you can do to a muscle car, supercharger, turbocharger, stroker package, head and cam package. Some people just do a camshaft, the different transmissions, different rear ends, simple cold air intake, man. I'm a bolt-on guy. I just like doing headers, cat bag exhaust, a few other modifications, the intake, such as cold air intake, changing the filter to like a K&M. 
and I'm good to go, man. It just I but I like bringing out that sound. And the one thing I say, change is happening all around us. You know, my dad's living down in Florida right now. They go down there, my parents. And he said they're starting to bring the hammer down on the sound of sports cars down there. Muscle cars, sports cars, exotics, and I suspect even those motorcycles. So the 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 police are really starting to target um, people with loud exhaust down there. And this starts getting to things like, you know, change with, they're starting to implement it new, uh, 20 new speed cameras this year. Uh, talking about, I guess, Pete Buttigieg is starting to enforce these laws. Um, Fox News talked about this. And a lot of conservatives think this is too much government where it's just, this is going too far. And it's like, imagine, now looking at this map, you know, looking at the red, uh, let me bring it up so I know what I'm looking at. <clears throat> so looking at the map, you got green and you got red. Green is a part where basically they are allowing speed cameras. But if you looked at red, which state is red? The Motor City. We still don't have, I guess, speed cameras in our state. So imagine if they start implementing this. Um, again, part of the funnel Woodward and still going out there is the burnouts, you know. And if you start implementing even cameras on every corner, well, people are going to start getting tickets, and you're not going to see that anymore. And talking about illegal street racing, which I'm not condoning, but it, it, it always has been part of the state of Michigan. And you're taking those freedoms away to get out. You know, some people think, oh, drag racing is super dangerous. Well, if you do it from a roll, just, you know, some people are just... Petty, they'll do it from like a 20 roll speed up, go up to 50 and back off. You know, some people will test their sports mar sports car, get on the on-ramp and go up to 70. You start putting speed cameras on every corner, I mean, you, you're just basically going to, you know, get rid of the whole sports car industry. You won't be able to do anything. You're not going to get away with anything. Well, someone like Buto Judge is going to say, well, this is going to prevent, that's is going to be, you know, pre prevent, um, less people speeding in result, like I said, prevent deaths and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's truth to it, but you're also taking a lot of freedom away. So it just, I think regulation is one of those things where it, it's a slippery slope. You go too far as we've seen with the mandates and now we got protests at the Canadian board with where I'm with those truckers. I think there should be an option considering there are side effects, you know, the Limericks, that, that, that was taken off the market. We need an option, okay? We need an option for a lot of these things. And it just, too much too much governing is not a good thing. And getting back to like Elon Musk said though about artificial intelligence, and I, you know, I know people, this is another touchy subject no one wants to talk about, but I mean, next 20 years, some, a lot of scientists, this is gonna be coming out, certain forms of it. I don't know if it's gonna be completely self-aware, but a lot of people that are completely libertarians believe in a complete free market or no regulations. Well, you have to have regulations in order to regulate this technology that wants to become self-aware. So it isn't misused. It doesn't misuse itself. Hence the movie Terminator, a lot of these other sci-fi movies. So, um, and the one thing Elon Musk said in a recent video, I can post this clip down here. You got to watch it. Is just, you have to, he goes, you know, when we started putting people in cars, um, you know, they tested out, you know, we didn't have any seatbelts. What would happen in a car crash? People were basically guinea pigs and a lot of people died. It took months, if not years, for this, for them to see the repercussions. Well, they implemented seatbelts and I'm sure the first seatbelts weren't the greatest. And it took, again, months and years to perfect that. Well, you know, come the airbag, you know, they started implementing airbags and it took some time to figure out. And I know some have shrapnel shooting out of them and they had to get that figured out to prevent that because people are suing automotive companies from the shrap shrapnel. When that airbag went off, it shoots shit up in your face. Some people would break their nose, but it was preventing people from dying. Um, what he's saying with AI is we don't have the time to like, let this shit roll and see what's going to happen with artificial intelligence once it rolls out. He goes, he's warning. He's a dude that's usually all about free market, but he's saying that we do need regulations on this stuff 
Because when this becomes self aware, we don't know what's going to happen. We really don't. You know, it's obviously going to change the whole job thing. I mean, considering what speed cameras are going to do probably with police, there be less policing because of that. Um, just never know with automation. But he talked about, this scared the shit of me, saying that technology will be so fast. You know, we had this, 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 I mean, not knocking James Cameron, but that we're going to be fighting like, you know, machines with guns. You know, possibly even lasers, lasers. But he said, even if you have a gun, you will be able to see them because they travel so fast before your eyes, you would not be able to see them. So, thinking outside of the box. And you're talking about a genius person that's below, so above my level, so above most of the average person's level. This guy's trying to think ahead so we can predict and probably come out with some new rules and regulations for this technology. It just kills me how... Some of this technology is using against regulating against us, but we're just not like regulating the technology at all, such as like, you know, AI. And he, like in this video, he warned us and this scares the shit out of him. So um, just thinking on those lines, you know, like I said, you know, we've gone too far with some regulations, I think with these speed cameras, now they're going to this, uh, you know, think you still have to implement regulations on AI. Um, but we're kind of getting off track here. Um, I do want to go back to the electric muscle car. Um, but I just want to show you, you know, about regulations. And another thing, before I get back to electric muscle car, I do want to say that, you know, I'm subscribed to these muscle car groups, sports car groups um, on Facebook. And one guy recently posted how they're starting to ban all types of different lawn equipment. In certain states, such as California and others, um, because, again, they leave a carbon footprint. And if we can have use an electric, you know, lawnmower, electric blower to blow the leaves around, well, of course, you're going to want to do it. You're going to save money not having to get gas. You don't got to breathe, breathe in those fumes. But this car enthusiast, I suspect, you know, whether he had an old muscle car or new muscle car, he felt kind of threatened by this. He goes, if they're going to start banning lawn equipment such as a lawnmower what if they start doing that to my own muscle car and it, this is even a slippery slope it's just like you know i myself i could see myself owning like a few muscle cars and sports cars using them to go to like car cruises car shows enjoying it on the weekends um and even going to the drag strip but my daily commuter of course, I'd like to have an electric car to save money, and it's probably going to, in the long run, be a lot more dependable because you're left move, moving parts, less maintenance. Um, however, what if, he has a good point, what if they do start banning sports cars and muscle, muscle cars, even for daily commuters? You're starting to you know, tread on people's freedom there. And, I mean, what if they do eventually you know, ban muscle cars altogether, the only way you can drive them is going to a car show, cruise, a vintage car show or cruise, or even a drag strip to prevent that carbon footprint. So, I mean, it just, there's so much to think about. This really opens up the Pandora box. It's like, I mean, it's just, oh man, there's so much, there's a lot to think about. And talking about, um, you know, Doug DeMero, he does really good reviews in sport cars, exotic cars, muscle cars. He brought up the price bubble. And he thinks this is just going to pop. You know, cars, just because of pandemic, the chip shortage, that cars eventually will go down in price and they'll stay down there for a long time. Because this happened in previous history. I'm not so sure. All I know is when like an athlete signs memorabilia or just has memorabilia or even a celebrity in a movie an artist a painting when that stuff dies off they they pass away what happens to the price it skyrockets right well that might happen with muscle cars sports cars and lines cars and i noticed the one car i love the terminator the cobra mustang terminator came out oh three oh four years i looked up the kelly blue book of what this one model Mustang is going for, an auto trader. And it's going for like, I want to say 46, 47 ground around, around that. The Kelly Blue Bick, and it's only got 7,000 miles. It's supposed to be priced at like between 28 grand to 30 grand. So it's 
above MSRP, like 17 grand right now. Some people, this is going to be a price bubble. I'm not so sure. Again, this technology is going away. Mopar is letting you know. And personally, if you're into this hobby and you do got the money, I don't know if it's the best time to invest in an owl, but you just never know what's going to happen. And maybe this might be a low price and we think it's super high now, but I don't know. I don't know. We've never been in this predicament where, you know, my dad compared to where we went from horse and buggy to the Model 2. I'm, I'm like, Dad, that's just, that's so. That's so much different than the age we're living in now with the newer technology. We just don't know what's going to happen, man. <coughs> so, um, prices might be keep going up. I don't know. And, you know, you got to think lines. A lot of muscar enthusiasts don't worry too much about the gas prices. However, my friend, you know, once upon a time, um, you know, we used to go to the cruises, car shows out on Woodward every weekend. He had a stroked out T-Bird. And when he built that engine up, um, it basically had like, what was it, you know, the combustion ratio. He had to run like basically um, racing fuel, like ethanol or something. And in doing so, you know, when he built that car, it was cheap. It was like around, I think, three or four bucks, he said. But like 10 years passed and I started hanging out with them, you know, ethanol and racing fuel shot up to like seven or eight bucks a gallon. And that's something else to think about because I think gas will keep going up as well too. I might be wrong, might be wrong. But I think if we're switching over to electric cars 2024, you know, I don't think our government's going to be regulating gas as much and it will skyrocket. Um, now, there might be a way... So, you know, I watched that Who Killed the Electric Car. Um, they had, like, these, like, electronic devices where you could just add something to the engine. And you could run a little cheaper fuel, I think, such as, um, what's that, E85. But, or, you know, they might come out. What if they could come out with some type of uh, cheaper corn fuel? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's just maybe they will find a way to keep uh, make cheaper fuel but i mean just the government in our country is trying to sway people away from comb combustion engines and bioelectric i mean i wouldn't be surprised if they just don't worry about the price of gas anymore and just and keep increasing it so it influences into buying a uh, 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 regular regular daily daily commuter because that did happen in history before if you watch who killed the electric car um some of the automotive companies bought up the trolleys so people didn't have, you know, didn't have the option, you know, to take a trolley to work. They had to buy a car. So they influenced people to buy cars. Interesting. And that's somewhat conspiratorial, some people say. And some people can't touch that word. But there's conspiracies that do happen in our country. You got to acknowledge them. Hello. Get out of your fucking bubble. But... Anyways, and then, then, you know, getting back to how the Model T originally did run on alcohol, which is a cleaner fuel source, but because a lot of things, you know, these millionaires and billionaires, you know, uh, uh, had these oil refineries, you know, had oil companies that they decided to force us on oil instead of running alcohol. Uh, also something to think about. So... And then, you know, oils makes plastic. You see how abundant that shit is in modern day. But getting back to, yeah, I kept going off and off. But it's just, there's so much to talk about. Uh, getting to um, the electric muscle car. Now, talking about the sound rumble exhaust. Anything else I want to touch upon here? Um, how it's going to, this is without a doubt gonna change culture i mean it's just i don't know where it's headed um the car hobby and i asked a few of my friends because i haven't been out there i still go to the car shows and stuff but i haven't i don't know what the daily weekend scene is out in the summer um i don't think it is like what it used to be 10 15 20 years ago um and it's kind of slowly dying off as is but imagine if it's something that's not as popular as it once were. These kids are participating in other things, especially on the computers and video games these days. Well, you can imagine that could be possibly the nail in the coffin. Um, 
And I do want to say, I forgot to mention this, uh, I do want to say there might be a way to add a sound to some of these muscle cars. And this was a funny comment. Um, I talked about the other comments that someone said, add playing cards to that car, you know, to the uh, Cobra turbo jet. Now that goes back to how us as young kids, we used to add players cards to our bicycles to sound more like motorcycles. And it gave us a little bit of thrill. I don't know say necessarily adrenaline rush. Maybe it did. Um, but it gave us a little bit of thrill sound like a motorcycle because, you know, everyone knows the chopper goes by, it turns heads, and it's super loud. And it's pretty badass and cool. Now, we kind of thought, it's funny because I noticed when you add the playing cards in on your bike, what it sounds like when you're riding it, it sounds like a nice rumble. But when you're further away, it just does sound like, you know, little plastic cardboard player cards on the bike going by and it just didn't have the same sound as you did when you're riding it. You know, you're like 20 or 30 feet, feet away. It just didn't sound right. Now, there might be some truth to that. I mean, what if there's a way for GM, Mopar, or Ford to add some type of sound to one of these electric muscle cars and bring back that sentimental value for things like burnouts, drag racing, drifting, and all those things to really Keep the enthusiasm, keep the thrill, keep the rush. Because, I mean, I remember, I want to say, like, I remember reading an article five, six years ago. I think this art, you know, some guys were thinking on the lines, once we do go to electric, what if they could implement some type of speaker system underneath the car? Now, you got to worry about things such as rain, ice, cold. I don't know how that would work out using, like, you know, a receiver and amplifier and putting a speaker underneath the car where the exhaust comes out try to replicate that may it might be able to done might not be able to do you since we have four th seasons here in Michigan but um, it gets you on the lines of thinking what if they could you know where those gears are turning um, there is still gears I suspect that they could em implement some type of thing that would create a sound from the electric motors to give these muscle cars a little more into you know a little more uh, uh, of a rush you know when you're racing them when you're driving them and all that and going back to this movie um, it was pretty cool it was with Justin Timberlake I don't know if you know this movie um, it kind of went underneath the rug uh, it was called In Time um, I guess it was basically somehow doctors and scientists figure out the way to cure aging people develop some type of cure to prevent people from aging and so basically instead of using normal currency such as you know cash and silver they use time and people get a limited amount of time and every time you go to your day-to-day -day job to work you would get more time and so you keep it on your forearm it's interesting is people would arm wrestle for time too. You know, you move your, your arm to the left, you lose time. Or I'm sorry, to the right, you lose time. You move to the left, you gain time, and people were arm wrestling over it. It was kind of cool, man, because I'm into arm wrestling. And, um, it was kind of neat. Getting to the point I want to make with this movie, they did have these, I want to say, police officers. I think they called them timekeepers. Um... And basically, these timekeepers would enforce the laws, trying to keep, uphold the law with not fraudulently finding a way to get time and keeping everyone going to their day-to-day -day hourly job to get time rather than trying to steal it at banks because they had banks with time and all that. But they had these timekeepers, getting past that, that basically drove around challengers. And what was unique about them is I don't think they got into what type of fuel they ran in but they did have electric sound coming from them it was obvious that they probably were electric muscle cars but i noticed there was still a little rumble to them and i'm what i'm getting at is if they could find a way to make some type of hybrid sound where it sounds a little electric you know going with what what style looks in modern day and also having a rumble to them like it did and incorporating that into these new muscle cars. Um, 
these new electric muscle cars. And I think that that movie did that flawlessly. I mean, it was pretty badass. They showed some racing scenes. I can show you to it in this video here. Um, where the timekeeper's trying to chase down Timberlake. And, you know, you hear the car going by. And it kind of had a nice sound to it. And it sounded like it's, you know... Like, a, sounds like an electric car, but it still sounds like a little retro. Got a little rumble to it. So, if they can figure out a way to do that, um, I have to say, you know, I hope Mopar, Ford, and GM listens to their fans. Um, you know, they put this video out, this Copra Jet video. I hope they're reading the comments. Um, people want sound, okay? So... There's no excuse now. You got freaking Facebook. You know, before we just had forums and websites. Now you got Facebook. You know, you got Twitter. All these social media sites. You can get easy, easily a lot of direct feedback on your product. And I hope these car companies are listening. Because the one thing I know about car companies is sometimes, you know, there's nepotism in there. These car designers, people get in positions of power just because they know people. And they just do it their way and they don't listen to what fans have to say, okay? And there's artists out there do that with music. First, they start off, you know, listening to your fans. They start off with a certain sound of music. And then they go off to doing their own thing. It starts turning into, like, what, you know, your producer wants rather than what the fans want. And especially even, even in these music videos. Um, I've heard the stories in some of these music documentaries where it leads to that. And it... It, it people you know artists music artists lose lose their talent that way sometimes they lose their self and i know one thing when bob lutz was trying to redesign the pontiac gtl and come out with a badass muscle car remember gto this is a car that basically one of the first muscle cars i think it might have been the mustang but the gto was like I think the next one or something that DeLorean guy ended up making and designing it was a success hit and that like led the way for like I mean the Mustang was still muscular but it just had a V6 it didn't have that muscular look to it the GTO on the other hand did and I think that spawned and gave birth to a whole different slew of different different design muscle cars and eat for each company and you had things like companies like AMC that are no longer people still like the Javelin um, but it gave birth to that. And so what I'm getting at is, you would think someone like Bob Lutz would take this seriously and get some designers that would try to do it retroly and try to bring back, you know, something old school but incorporating in a modern day look to it. Um, <clears throat> kind of like what they did um, with the Camaro, you know, the Fit Gen Camaro. I think it looks... The taillights suck, but it still looks pretty decent. It goes back to, you know, the heritage of the Camaro. But they took, like, an Australian, I guess they call it, like, a muscle car over there. I don't know. But they took the Monero, slapped on some GTO badges of this, you know, Monero from over in Australia. And basically slapped on some GTO uh, badges and came out with it in the American version of the Pontiac GTO. Safe to say this car I think was only around two or three years and some people actually say this was like you know where um, Pontiac took a turn for worse and basically some people say actually the reason why it no longer exists and if you look at some of those cars like the G8, the G6 they're nothing special. I mean, some people might like it. Some people are into like, you know, uh, how is how to explain like a sports car luxury. Um, you know, I have friends that like kind of like the same people like Beamers. You know, BMWs are a little on luxury and sports car. I would kind of say that's what the G8 is kind of about. It's like a regular uh, luxury sedan for American car, and then adding in a V8. Well, that's what, you know, the Pontiac GTO looked like with the Monero. It just, it was bland. Um, then, I think the first year it didn't have hood scoops. Next year they added in the hood scoops. It made it look a little more aggressive. Um, I have a friend that had one. Uh, the first year it made, it didn't have hood scoops, so he bought the new hood. on uh, new version of the GTO slapped on the hood. 
and he actually made a, a, a he stroked out the engine. I think he even added a supercharger at one point. It was pretty badass, but it's still the looks of it didn't go back to the you know you know the the original look of what a muscar is supposed to look. It was more of a just like you know resembled a sports car a sedan like a BMW or something like luxury sporty look so um I guess that's the best way to put it I don't know maybe they got better terminology these days to explain what a you know BMW is some of those guys some of those cars um but it's just yeah I mean I didn't care for it but I think the problem with Lutz is he didn't listen to what fans wanted and I had a friend that owned a T-Burn in our car club. And he said, basically, well, this is what some people wanted. You know, people were into some of the Musk cars in Australia. I'm like, dude, my dad doesn't even know that they had such a thing as a Monero. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe he's talking about some of the younger kids were saying that on the forum. I didn't want it, you know. But, you know, I guess some people did want, like, something that resembled Australian Musk car. But I think for the most part... You know, you're going by one guy, and he had a different taste as is. I think he ended up getting, like, what was it? He had a, a T-Bird, then he ended up getting a Ford Torino. And so it just, he obviously had a different taste in the cars. Or I don't even know if you classify Torino as a must car, just like you classify a T-Bird. But it's just like some people are into that, and they tend to think other people are into that. I got to have a bold look, man. I had something that looks like it'll bite your ass. And I have to say, you know, those 4 Gen F bodies had that look. Um, you know, the 2000, or 1998-2002 to Trans MW6. Taking a look at the photo here. It looks like it's going to bite you. I had this, my Albanian friend Pony, when I first got it, he's like, dude, that thing looks like it's going to bite you. <laughs> You know, and he said that. And then I, you know, that says Camaro. Some people call it a catfish. It looks still pretty good. And I have to say, C5 was very sleek. And it incorporated, I would say, some people still call it Corvette just a sports car. But it's still, certain years are defined as a muscle car. Because it had a bold look to them. Especially the older ones. Um, with the split window on back. But I would say I would still classify it as a muscle car. Um, that C5 version was very sleek, but it had a bold, strong look to it. And I have to say, something happened after, you know, talk about nepotism, designers. I don't know what happens in these companies, but just going by what I've seen in documentaries and hearing about it, it just, there might, something happen <laughs> after those four gens and that C5 Corvette were just designing, just went downhill. I mean, I... The C8, I would say the C6 Corvette looks good. I like that one. C7, C8, but these cars are starting to look like from they're from the bottom of a cereal box, okay? Like a Hot Wheels car. And I've heard that from even people describing the Camaro. I like when the Fit Gen first came out, but now they're starting like the, 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 the headlights, the front end, the air dam, the rear end, and... You know, getting into the movie Transformers, it does start looking like a Hot Wheels car. And it's just like, you know, bottom of the cereal box. So we're starting, like, getting off track of, like, what a muscle car is supposed to look like, I think. And it's just like, and these cars are starting to have more of a, like, a plasticky look to them. I think you could even say that about the C8 Corvette. It just looks like it's all plastic. I did, I got to post that video. I posted on my TikTok Instagram where I incorporate a little music. The one color that looks pretty bass, badass on the C8 um, is that mineral gray. Um, it just goes along with that sleek look and the big side scoops and the mid engine. It just, it goes along not nicely. It has a smooth look to it and still muscular, but any of the other brighter colors like orange, red, they got like some type of neon, yellow and green. It just looks like, again, something in the bottom of a cereal box and they're starting, cars are starting to look like Ferraris. Um, maybe because some of these designers are coming from overseas. I don't know, I don't know. But all I know is, you know, some of these American cars are starting to lose, 
what they look and feel like. But the one thing is, I would have never guessed it. Um, I'm going to wrap it up shortly here. Uh, when I had my fourth gen Trans Am W6, the 2002, um, and my 04 Cobra at the time, you know, basically GM was kind of king of the street, but then, you know, for a while their Ford was lacking. I think one year they didn't come out with the Cobra Mustang because it was so underpowered, and they came out with the 2004 Terminator, hence the name, and capitalized that on it, brought back that muscle. I would have never thought that Mopar would eventually become like they are now, where they're basically, they're the top of the muscle car industry, like the hobby right now. Chargers and Challengers are in but, you know, at the time when I had muscle cars, it was just Ford Gen F bodies were in, that Cobra rolled out, and Ford and GM were kicking ass, and Mopar, they had just rolled out that Charger, which looked okay. Then they had that SRT version, which you rarely saw, but wasn't that great. Um, and now look at what happened. They ruled the market, man, especially with the Hellcat. The Demon, they're so popular, figure out ways to steal so many of them in Detroit. I mean, it's incredible how popular the Hellcats are now, man. Um, I guess they get this Apple Pod or something attached. Originally, it was supposed to help find cars, but now the you know, people stealing cars are attaching your car just to hunt down Hellcats and stuff and steal them. Like, wow. But anyways, I think what I'm getting to is I think these car companies can figure out a way to bring out a sound of these electric muscle cars if they listen to their fans rather than just doing what the designers want, especially, you know, people in management, someone like Lutz. Um, I didn't care for that guy's attitude and personality. Um, maybe other people did. I mean, maybe he did. I think he still was in GM when those four gens come out, but something happened in there. And, you know, sometimes they change designers. I don't know what happened. I don't know the history, but something fucked up. And I know he get eventually retired and was on the shit list with GM. So um, listen to your fans. Listen to what people want rather than what management wants. You know, rather what, you know, people in any of these titles, even the designers, I think, have to listen. And I think it's pretty obvious what people want with electric muscle cars. They want that bold, muscular look of an American muscle car, but they also want sound. And you're, they're going to have to figure out a way to do sound. And you could come out with all types of different modified sounds. That would be cool. Getting into all the different modifications of a standard combustion engine muscle car. Because like I said, there's so much stuff you can do with it. We're going electric. There's so much less maintenance, and they talked about that in that documentary, Who Killed Electric Cars. Um, so, you know, they'll have to figure out a way to make these electric muscle cars fun. You could still, you know, modify the exterior, but, you know, some people do like love adding in a nice hood scoop. But the some of the cars I really like seeing when I go out on Woodward Cruise is seeing a, like, basically... A blower, you know, on one of these um, older muscle cars, which is a supercharger, and having the big fat, you know, slips in back. Man. It just, that look, and it's like a uh, pro, basically a pro street car look. It looks badass, man. And if they could find a way to still bring out the look of those and have hood scoops, but add sound, but it just, I think they're. They're going to have a tough time tuning it because, I, again, there's not a lot of things you're going to be able to modify with electric Mars muscle car. I think, again, you can add in hood scoops, um, maybe a little sound, but things like having a blower supercharger that sticks out of your hood, that's going away. And what we know is, I mean, that's what some of those shots in the movie Mad Max were all about were incredible, man, seeing that supercharger. And it, going to modern day... Well, Nitrous was really popular in Fast and Furious, in the button, and they, tr you know, they try to add in all types of CGI, CGI effects to that movie to make it seem like they're going a lot faster, you know, with the lights flying by, um, causing a blur effect, all types of stuff. Um, but we'll, they'll have to figure out a way because it just, it worries me that, um, 
that basically uh, this could really deter a lot of people from enjoying the sport and just like it might eventually put, you know, the like I said, the last nail in the coffin with it. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. Um, but I do know what's going on with climate change. Um, I recently wrote this article um, on my blog suggesting how, you know, back in the 90s, even the 80s, we used to go out in front of Geno's, uh, Geno's Surf, like 200, 300 cars out on the ice, the main lake. You never see, like, you know, the main lake frozen over anymore. So it amazes me pe pe people still are saying this is a cycle, but I've seen it firsthand, you know. There is a time when me and my buddy Andrew and my brother went out on ice with this dude that had like a big old 4x4 truck. Um, they actually got in back and they started doing donuts on this ice in front of Geno's. You know, are people doing that still nowadays? No. Are you seeing 203 or cars out on the ice in front of Geno's? No. So it's something to think about. And it amazes me, well, it's just a cycle. Well, the one thing we can measure with excessive carbon is, you know, when it's in the atmosphere and it comes down and hits the water, it's acidifying the water, making it less habitable for fish to breathe in. And especially in the ocean, the acidification is actually bleaching the coral on the reef. And if you know anything about fish that spawn, any of the smaller fish that hide in cover um, from the predators, apex predator, even, you know, friggin' sharks, musky lunch, and, and freshwater. Well, if you don't have any structure for these fish to hide and spawn in, well, it's gonna have a domino effect and they're gonna start to die off. And, you know, not to mention smaller fish also feed off of the plants on the Great Barrier Reef. They feed off of the, the microorganisms that also thrive in the plants. And it just, if the Great Barrier Reef is being you know, bleach by the acidification of the ocean. And this is something we can measure, you know, from the carbon in the atmosphere. Well, obviously it's bad. And this is where we're going to have to start merging off of, you know, um, oil and gas onto something, a cleaner technology such as electric cars. So not to say, you know, people always bring up, well, batteries do have, is a major pollutant and a lot of these things are ending up I think in landfills however the main problem at hand right now we're in is again climate change and it's bringing out things such as hurricanes um, more natural destruction uh, such as tornadoes and you know I agree you know the water level hasn't risen like they predicted but it has risen um, it's having repercussions around the country um, uh, one thing, uh, Florida, I remember seeing this, you know that apartment building that collapsed? Well, basically, some scientists say that's shown from the water level rising down there and it started eating away at the infrastructure and then the building collapsed. So we might start seeing more of that with our inf infrastructure collapsing as the water level rises. So this was in this article, I'll share it with you. And then... You know, another problem is red tide. I think a lot of this is a lot of other things, uh, such as, um, uh, what should we call it, uh, fertilizer, uh, a lot of other plumes, but I'm sure oil has can cause red tide too, you know, excessive oil. Not to mention we had that big BP oil spill in the Gulf, you know, not too long ago. And that was super bad. If, you know, if you haven't lived through it and you're still young, look up some of the videos on YouTube and seeing the major destruction and have had on the habitat, habitat and the animals. And I'm sure that helped acidify some of the water too. So, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to have to go on a cleaner technology just for those reasons. Um, and I talked about this. Electric cars and climate change are inevitable, whether you believe them and or not. Because, I mean, again, going back to the BP oil spill just for that reason. And, you know, if you've seen the movie Gasland with, you know, natural grass fracking, natural gas fracking, well, that's a problem too. And so, um, and this really is having an impact on the fishing industry. I wrote about this, uh, the red tide problem here in Florida. Of course, here's a video of a surfer 
then all claims he almost went blind from a from a surfing out in the red tide. He's warning people. Um, and you know, some people will say, "Oh, he's you know, surfers tend to be a little more triagers." So that's probably not a good example. But this is a great example right here. You got one video down below. Check out this video where this fisherman said this needs to stop. Another fisherman in protest covers himself in dead fish. And this, this guy that covered himself in dead fish was a fishing guy, a charter. So it's affecting his business royally. I've never seen this before in my lifetime of, you know, a fisherman covering himself in dead fish. So this is, this is a big sign. We're, we're going to have to change some of our ways. This is having impact. And here's a really sad uh, photo of a sea turtle you know, dead. Um, and here's, you know, Tampa Bay cabins discuss red tide and the problems. And the Florida manatees are also dying in an off rate, um, pretty bad rate. And I talk about things such as glyphosate, um, the herbicide. Um, so, I mean, it's just a lot of things uh, are starting to add up. And, you know, while Going over this clear technology is going to change some of our culture, some of the things we love, our sports. I mean, hopefully we can find a way to adapt and still enjoy them. Um, I, for one, you know, even though I still like combustion engines with muscle cars, um, and I'd like to see them stick around so we can, you know, celebrate history, still go out to car cruises and car shows, and celebrate history because again these names of these cars you know the mustangs they named after like you know the mustang p51 fought, fought in a world war ii you know my grandpa fought in world war ii and then you got the hellcat um you know named after that other fighter airplane so it just we should celebrate history so we don't end up repeating and seeing what's going on right now and so we should always be allowed to celebrate history and considering, you know, fireworks, you know, really fun display. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, Vice had a special on, you know, how the oil industry put out propaganda with a few amount of scientists to cast out, basically muddy the waters. So it would make people a little confused, the link between, you know, climate change and the carbon footprint from these oil companies. And they actually use some of the same scientists that they use to, you know, muddy the waters and cast doubt and link between cancer and cigarettes. You should watch this video. It's really good. But I don't think there's, the denial is not just from that. I think deep down people know that, you know, this technology could change their hobby, could change their culture. It's just something they're not interested in. I know a lot of fishermen that hate YouTube. A lot of fishermen hate filming their expeditions some people are complete, completely against it because, you know, it might be blowing up the spot and stuff. But again, we're con our country is about freedom. And if there really is no way to, I hate to say it, there's no way really stopping this technology as we progress and evolve in this new technological revolution. We're in a major transition, as you can see. And I don't know if you've read, you know, one of the horror stories is the, um, Unabomber, okay. This guy, I guess, was a brilliant man. He actually taught, I think, at one University of Michigan, or he was a student there, one of the two, if I remember. Uh, Joe Rogan brings it, brings him up from time to time, but if you read his manifesto, um, he saw some of the repercussions of what technology can do. So, it just taking away jobs, take culture, uh, changing culture, and he just flipped out and started killing people that, you know, were making technological advances. So, um, it's real interesting what's going to happen because, too, again, too much regulation, not a good thing. Not enough regulation, not a, there, not a good thing. There's got to be a balance. Um, but, you know, I really hate to see electric mar muscle cars basically dissolve the whole muscle muscle car sport and hobby man i mean i don't know what's what they're going to do with nascar if you're still going to allow them you know to go around the circle with a combustion engine i i don't know what you know they might just go to electric i have no clue but 
we do have to change for these reasons considering what's happening in the environment. You know, just the BP oil spill alone, if you just don't want to acknowledge climate change. I mean, right now, another thing is PFAS, you know. And I do know people that are still going to Kent Lake ignoring the signs as soon as you enter that park to say do not keep the fish, fish because of this chemical that stays in the environment for a long period of time. You know, it comes to like fire retardants, um, a lot of other things. And so, you know, people are still keeping the fish. You know, I'm not, I've been around the corner. I've, you know, fished for a long time. I've been in the car industry a long time. I see denial on these things from both sides. And I understand it, you know, and in my own way, I I am as well. Like I said, I've done catalytic converters on my muscle cars, but you know, I like people like Joe Rogan who brings awareness to these things. Um, he's head on climate, you know, pro climate scientist. People have written books about it, like this chick here. Um, he's in on other people that talk about other controversial things, um, such as, uh, prion disease, you know, mad cow disease, which obviously he, he hints it to something like he had on Ted Nugent and he hints it to, he's in denial over it. So, I mean, it is what it is, man. Um, it's weird about human beings, how it just like, everyone's in their own little bubble. They really are, man. Everyone's on a little bu bubble, how they acknowledge certain things, they ignore other things because it doesn't fit their ideology. Tribalism, man. Tribalism. And it's just, you know, when more people going about just chewing each other's neck out on social media and internet, it just separates us even more and creates less middle ground. We got to find a middle ground. So, um, and I have to say, it's what I was getting at it, it's nice to see a conversation finally opening up between these fishing captains, these fishing guides on YouTube. And I posted these videos down here because I have to say some of the pros, some of the, you know, veteran anglers that have TV shows here in Michigan, I barely hear them talk about things, even like the, you know, Michigan great outdoors about things like climate change. Um, PFAS, prion disease, just ta not talked about enough. You know, like uh, the Linder brothers with Angling Edge, you know, that guy, every episode at the end has time for Bible time. Well, if there's time for Bible time, there should be also discussion on these things that are directly affecting our fishing habitat, our natural resources, We where we can't even keep any of the fish over at Kent Lake, you know, it just amazes me. It's just, it's not talked about. And, oh, you know, it's it's too controversial and goes about against, you know, what I believe in. Well, you know, better start acknowledging them. That's all I got to say. And, you know, I hate to bring this up in something so depressing, such as electric muscle car going down the quarter mile and not having any sound to it. So this, this video sucks as is, but then I start adding in, you know, these photos of the dying fish, dying turtles. It, it's sad, yeah. I, but you know what? We gotta talk, we gotta open up the discussion on these things, because I know it's, some people are starting to do it more often nowadays, um, because, you know, it's, it's affecting the industry directly. But it amazes me how even at the TV level, they're still not talked about. You know, these guys have, you know, million dollar productions on their tv shows again people should be making time to talk about this stuff um i just on my old channel i talked about it too often i try to find a balance there and bring it up from time to time now instead of like doing it like i think i was doing it like every month um but it's just like it's hard not to talk about it when i went down to florida and they had it on the news about you know don't fish in the red tide. Be aware of it. You know, if you get into it, it's really bad if you breathe in the vapors. Just being next to the red tide. And I was fishing, again, in the surf, going in the water, casting out there because I didn't have a boat down there, didn't have a kayak, didn't have any of my stuff to get out on the water. So I was shoreline fishing. And the further you can get your lure out there, meaning get in the water and not be eaten by any sharks, you know, 
the better you can catch fish. And I found that out with Naples, throwing an extract jerk bait and getting them snook one after another. So it just, you know, things are gonna be changing. We're in a transition. It's inevitable whether you like it or not. You like it or not. So I post that article on my blog. Um, and I definitely, I just want to leave off with this. Um, you know, Terminator 2, one of my favorite movies. Um, I remember back in grade school when I had friends dressing up as the T-1000. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Robert Patrick with his hair slicked back. I also had friends dressing up as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, it just, I mean, people loved that movie. Even at a song young age but i don't think people realized <coughs> realized uh the deeper meaning to that movie really with technology ai all this stuff and again we're in a transit transition phase you know meanwhile russia's over there trying to invade U ukraine trying to put you know the soviet union back together we're still in a major cold war with china and things are really teetering teetering on war right now um, I just want to leave off this great quote uh, from the movie. No fate but what we make. So something to think about um, when it's just like you're constantly focusing on just, oh, you know, it's just the sound. We're lo losing the sound. This whole hobby is going away. They're going to ruin everything. Um, going back to the Grand National, man, you know, when em emissions rolled out, um, you know, things like the... Smokey and the Bandit Firebird really didn't have that much power to them. And people lost interest in the muscle car hobby. It kind of went to shit, I heard. You know, it's hard to say because I'm just going by what I've heard in documentaries. Um, like that documentary Black Air, you get to watch this. But they found a way. GM found a way. They put designers, engin engineers' heads together to come out with this V6 muscle car called the Grand National. And they turbocharged it. And what do you know? It became a cult classic. And even though it doesn't have the sound of a V8, man, people were still interested and they loved it. It actually ended up beating a stock Grand National, from my understanding in that movie or that documentary, Black Hair, ended up beating a Ferrari. You know, a car that's like, I want to say like 10 times the price of a Grand National. So I think when. Americans put, put their heads together, they can successfully create an incredible product. And maybe we can do that with this new technology, figure out a way. Um, might not have as much spice as the you know, combustion engine in these older muscle cars, but it might be a way to continue on a hobby like they did with the Grand National. And it's still, it's a legendary car, man. And be sure to watch that documentary. Uh, but for that reason, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you guys for watching the podcast, uh, Tight Lines Anglers, and take care automotive, automotive enthusiasts.